soccer until age 25. That's because he spent several years in a kickboxing career before deciding he wanted a larger, more global image and that he wanted specifically a chance to fight in the United States. So he had to get out of kickboxing and move into boxing to do that. His first boxing match was a 10-round fight. There's a five or a one-inch height advantage for De Leon. Arm length, a one-and-a-half-inch advantage for De Leon. Weight, 122 pounds each. They weighed in at the weigh-in yesterday. Tonight, De Leon unofficially 131. Look Nung Young Toy unofficially 129 pounds. Two southpaw sluggers. You don't see that all that often. Rules it about with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Daniel Ponce de Leon, son, look down at Young Choi. Fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Jim, once again, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim. And here's a look at Saad Luknanyang Toy, second fight outside Thailand. The first one was the battle in Tucson, Arizona last year. Luknanyang Toy has his own particular view of the fight that he lost, Larry, to De Leon in Tucson. Said it was the best fight of his life. Had it been in Thailand, he would have won it. Probably right. Fighters who begin as kickboxers have to alter their style somewhat, of course, when they move to boxing. Look on Yang Toy's people say he made that transition without any difficulty whatsoever. Because he was winning with his, more with his hands than with his feet. Makes all the sense in the world. Emmanuel Stewart, for a long time, there was a hard and fast image for southpaws in the sport. Almost always they were boxers, very often finesse cutie boxers. Now, recently, we see more and more and more southpaw sluggers. Here's a fight where two southpaws are going to stand and trade with each other. Why is it changing? Uh, I guess the fact that we have so many of them, when you start to get the volume of anything, you're going to get some higher percentages. But you're right, most southpaw boxers that I've dealt with, and we're just talking to one of them to our right over here, Pernell Whitaker, most all southpaws I've worked with mostly were intelligent. Fighter. Yeah, you're seeing a totally different trend. Manny Pacquiao is the epitome of that change with this aggressive style of boxing, but it's unusual for southpaws to be aggressive. And here's a real face first southpaw fighter, Larry. Very rough, tough, raw, crude fighter. Not particularly well schooled, just strong and very willful. So it should be an entertaining fight. As they go at it for the second time, the first one, a victory by decision for Ponce de Leon, which Lutnin Yang Toy says surely would have gone his way had we been in Bangkok. And now let's go to a ring announcer, Michael Buffer, for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Golden Boy Promotions and Main Events present another World Championship Contest. Brought to you in association with Rockstar, Party Like a Rockstar, and Southwest Airlines. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point system are Carol Castellano, Dwayne Ford, Doug Tucker, and when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action inside the ring, referee Jay Nady. And now from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Junior Featherweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing yellow, official weight, 122 pounds. His professional record, 27 victories, including 10 knockouts, only one defeat. He comes from Sritep, Thailand, he is the WBO number two ranked challenger in the world, Saad Luknyang And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black, official weight 122 pounds also. His professional record 28 victories, including 26 knockouts, only one defeat. He comes to us from 
Cuauhtémoc, Chihuahua, Mexico, the reigning, defending, WBO Junior Featherweight Champion of the World, Daniel Ponce de Leon. Any questions? Good luck. Tell them good luck. Uh -huh. well, you're good. Thanks. No use talking to them. They don't speak any, any language I speak, either one of them. Saad, I think, is likely to try to box De Leon more in this fight than he did in the last one when he delivered a perfect right hook that dropped there? De Leon in the second round. But I think he found out that uh, De Leon was a little stronger than him. Let's see how he handles him now. De Leon begins with a looping left over the top and a couple body shots. And immediately you see that the Thai fighter, Saad Lukman Yangtoy, has shorter straighter punches and comes more up the middle. Now De Leon starts to go to his jab and a good one. No back off in either fighter. If you're wondering... Oh, oh what a perfect left hand shot by De Leon. I don't think that Saad is going to get up. In fact, I think Saad is unconscious. He is absolutely gone on a perfect shot by De Leon, and that's gonna be a knockout in 52 seconds. And Saad is totally unconscious. They're trying to get the mouthpiece out of his mouth. And now he awakes to find himself in Las Vegas on a Saturday night. Too early on a Saturday night. A long way to come to fight for less than a minute. There is no joy in Bangkok. You see the oxygen mask immediately there as a preventive measure. And Saad gratefully accepts the oxygen. All the air taken out of his balloon and momentarily out of his brain by a sensational shot from De Leon. You cannot throw that any better. He was hit a number of hard shots in their first fight. Maybe it's just the first round. Uh, he didn't see but, it coming. But, and that he didn't see it coming, but there's no maybe about the result. It's been a while since we've seen that definitive a shot. How do you feel? You know you and now that Saad begins to fathom what has taken place, he is embarrassed to say the least where are you de Leon, uh, you may have noticed has a braid in the back of his head let's take another look at the punch larry just a big wide with his whole shoulder and all of his backside and his legs right into the punch and with sod coming forward toward the punch what? leaning right into it as if he was trying to throw a fastball. That is the first knockout loss for Saad Luknanyangtoy, but that's a knockout that he can talk about and fret about for quite some time. It's unlikely he met anybody who can punch like that when he was a kickboxer. Daniel Ponce de Leon can say to his friends and family, you want to see a perfect shot? <laughs> One night in Vegas, I threw the most perfect shot imaginable. Anyway, that ponytail you see behind him uh, is, a, is a tradition from an Indian tribe that his family belongs to, which he said is uh, famous for running and fighting. We can believe the fighting. Well, let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the knockout in less than one minute.
Ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand, the end comes officially at 52 seconds of the very first round. The winner by knockout victory, and still, WBO Junior Featherweight Champion of the World, Daniel Ponce de Leon. Fifty-two seconds of round one, and copy box numbers will show you that uh, it was a dominant De Leon performance. He landed 12 times as many punches as did the TIE fighter. And he uh, threw three times as many. Much higher connect percentage, etc., etc., etc. In other words, Luke Nung Young Toy barely arrived in Vegas. Threw 11 punches, landed one, got himself knocked into next week. You think David Diaz wishes it could be that easy? I think everybody wishes it could be that easy. <laughs>